water change day on the alligator gar pond. So before we put them back in the tank, we're going to have a look how big they've grown. And they are mahoosive. Both Minnie and Mooney have been tucking the climbing perch away like there's no tomorrow. They've also been fed on croaking garamis. Uh, I don't know the name of the, the, the common wild garamis that we've got here. We've got two types. But yeah, they certainly like the live fish. And also they've been on a diet of live frogs as well. So we'll just top this up a little bit more. Let Kymuk have a play. And tune, obviously. Uh, and then we'll show you the, the Enormodons. There's a huge difference between the gar tank and our two adjacent tanks here. These two tanks are for our juvenile crayfish. These are what, what we call our teenage crayfish. And these are the freshly hatched ones that we've put in here up to about two weeks old. So, uh, yeah, you can see that the water quality stays a lot, lot better. And it's basically because they're not eating about 10 fish a day. <laughs> so you can imagine whatever goes into a fish also comes out the other end. So there's quite a lot of waste, so to speak. And of course the prey fish as well are uh, pooping while they're in there. Now, none of these tanks have filtration on. So what we do with the gar at the moment, once a week we do a partial water change. When I say partial, probably about 50%. Uh, every two to three weeks we do a complete water change topped up by our water tank there so it takes water off the gutter off this outside living area gutter here uh, whereas these you, well you don't have to change the water for about oh, I would say about six weeks uh, we just top it up really as it evaporates of course all guys should be fed on fresh Lego every day Excellent. Yeah. Nice balanced diet. Oh. Uh, what we're going to do as well, just to see how brave Kaimuk is, we're going to put the uh, uh, Jalake in here while she's still in here. <laughs> see how brave she is. You don't know what you're about. Tell her then. Busy. Tell her, see what she says. Who am I? Oh, right, we're about halfway there, and then we'll put the gas back in. All right, the moment of truth. Oh, my gosh. Oh, 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 chill, chill, chill. Chill, chill. Wow. Mini Bele, Mooney, 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 Mooney. It's a smaller one, isn't it? Not small now. This is Mooney. This Mooney, Mooney, you know. Should do it over the tank, then if you drop, go straight in. Can put them back in slowly. Hold it there in the water, see where they go themselves. Beautiful. Mimi, I look. Do I
It normally takes a hyacinth about 24, 36 hours for, the, for them to upright themselves after moving them. Uh, but they should be fine. The alligator floating weed, uh, that, that's pretty, pretty rampant once it gets going. We've taken most of the snails out here. We've just left a couple in there. Uh, and we're gonna we're gonna up the amount of shrimp in there and the uh, little guppies and things like that. Uh, there's plenty of little places for them to hide in there, so we'll just keep on. I don't know, put ten in every few days from the other tanks. Uh, so that will take care of the mosquitoes, uh, and then we'll continue giving the uh, the wild fish to Mooney and Minnie uh, that we catch out of the lake or we catch out of the ponds or the the little drainage ditch. So it seems to be their, their favorite is probably climbing perch. As far as the amount that they're eating, if, if you give them little baby climbing perch like that, they'll probably have five or six a day each, um, not really more than that. They will still eat uh, dead fish, fresh dead fish. Uh, if they're a bit pen and ink out of a trap or the net or something like that, then they won't touch them. So they've obviously got some, uh, some good sense of smell going on. Um, but, yeah, if they're really hungry, as soon as you throw the dead fish in, they'll, they'll nail them. Um, if you throw them in and uh, they're not particularly hungry and the, the fish drop to the bottom, uh, if they don't take them within half an hour or an hour, then I'll, I'll take them out. I don't want to sour the water or anything like that. I think long term, we're going to have to look at getting some sort of filtration in. Not too concerned about um, the oxygen levels because they're air breathers anyway, but you know I'm aware of nitrate levels in, in the water. So, um, yeah, it would cut down the amount of water changes that we've got to do. Um, but it's, it's hardly a hardship. Probably half an hour all in, draining the water out, just quick rinse down and then top it back up with the rainwater. Uh, but yeah, if we go with a the filter, then um, that'll obviously add oxygen at the same time anyway. Uh, yeah, we'll have to wait and see. Probably a standalone solar powered filter I'll have to have a look on Lazada for that I don't want to be running stuff off our main solar system I want to keep that you know that sort of thing separate make sure we've got enough power in the house so it's a good job we didn't put them in the lake isn't it <laughs> they're a little bit too small anyway but no now look if we'd put them in the lake they would have gone or, well there'd there been no way of knowing that they were still in there or not and uh, if someone had caught them and they'd have just eaten them so that would have been a shame as far as actually stocking them into the lake goes, I would guesstimate it, it's going to be sort of like mid to back end of the uh, the next dry season. Hopefully, you know, any remedial works that, um, that are going to be done on the lake should be done by then and uh, we can pop them in there. We'll also be emptying our, uh, our fence pond as well. That's got our biggest fish in there. All the, pot, all the pot stock ponds near the house are going to be drained bar one, the one with the Mekongs and the Siamese carp. There's no point in draining that. I want them really big before we put them in the lake. Um, but yeah, we might even drain down the, the crayfish pond because there's some fish have got in there during the flood. So uh, knowing our luck, it's probably walking catfish and they're munching on the crayfish as we speak. <laughs> 